Adam and Derek here. We just got done seeing The Martian at the uh, Icon Theater here in lovely Minnesota. It's a beautiful night out. Oh, gorgeous, yeah. And uh, it was a beautiful movie. I loved it, yeah. Yeah. Matt Damon, uh, Jessica Chastain. Yeah, we got Mike, Michael Pena, Kate Mara. Michael Pena is, is the new what, John Leguizamo of the decade. He is, yeah. He's, he's in a little bit of everything. You know who's the most surprising person to appear in this movie? Kristen Wiig. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Now that, now that the bumper's done, I was going to say we're going to keep this spoiler free, but you just ruined Kristen Wiig. Was she in the trailers? Uh, she might have been. She probably okay. was, yeah. It's not a big reveal. <laughs> I didn't see a trailer for this movie going in. I went in fresh as uh, a fish. That's not a phrase, but I'm going to make it one. It fresh, as a, fresh, fresh as a fish into the film. nation is big enough and will be. <laughs> it's not. And, uh, yeah... For one of the only times I've never or I've never watched a movie preview before going to the film because it was a really Scott joint and I knew I was going to see this and probably like it. I was one of the 10 people that liked Prometheus, mostly from a visual standpoint. There was a ton wrong with it in the script department, but this was beautifully shot, extremely well acted. The story was great. You're a big uh, reader. Did you read the book? I hadn't read the book yet. I had planned to, but uh, now that I saw such a beautiful movie, I don't know, know if I need Probably to go not. back and do it. I got oh, yeah. a pretty good story. I did hear on. some uh, guys chatting it up in the uh, the men's bathroom. The book, yeah. I, I didn't have to go to the bathroom. I just like to kind of hang out in there from time to time. And they were talking about how it was, they did quite a few things different from the book. So... That's as much as I can bring to the table. Might be worth a spin. I mean, there's probably a lot more details of his time yeah, on, on the planet, the, the yeah. planet Mars. Yeah, it is Mars. Now, we, we had a conversation <laughs> before this. We were going to the movie. We were like, does this take place on Mars? Is that what a Martian is? Is that an alien from Mars? Yeah. Or a, we, I'm yeah, not sure we like ever... the most realistic option. Oh, I don't, sure. didn't think he was living on the moon. So I just mean the definition of Martian. Does that mean you're a, a person that lives on Mars? Or is Martian just another way of saying alien? Did, did we come to terms with that yet? I think that's a question for an astronaut. I mean, if there was only some some form of technology we could use to quickly Google the answer. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. We'll never know. We'll never know. I'm showing a lot of skin here. I don't really know what's going on. It's, yeah, it's a deep cut. You're welcome, ladies. It's two hours and 20 minutes. I thought the runtime was was fine. I wasn't checking my watch. No. Uh, my phone was off. So, yeah, I thought it was a good amount of time. I didn't... Uh, I don't think if it was if it any shorter, uh, I don't think they would have had good enough story. There was right. like, a lot of good meat and potatoes in that story. There were a lot of potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. Basically Literally. lives on those for a year. I like movies where the protagonist dies. I also like movies where the protagonist lives. You can you can take with that what you will. And if you've read the book, you already know the ending. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe not. Sometimes they change that that's shit. That's true, you yeah. Never know. Like Fight Club. Yeah. Did they change that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think he... Um, well, you think or you know? I read the last... I, they did change it. Okay. They changed oh, it. They, no, I don't well, know. I don't we know. Can, know. We, can, we can discuss, discuss that details. off. We can discuss that <laughs> off camera. We can go into a Fight Club conversation. <laughs> you know, I'm filming with a GoPro, and if I didn't have one going into this review, I probably would go pick one up Why thanks not, to man? all the non-subliminal messaging. It was shoved right down your throats. Mm -hmm. They use GoPros everywhere in the movie. Hooked onto his helmet, hooked onto the rover, it's hooked onto the space shuttle. Even the NASA guys are using it. I saw about 50 shots of GoPros. <laughs> and, and they made you well aware it was a GoPro. You got to see that logo up front and center. Wally comparisons I heard going into this. You see any there? Uh, I actually haven't seen Wally, <sighs> which is going to crush you. <laughs> what? I, I saw comparisons for sure. There's, there's a good... Uh, I'd say like 45 minutes where there's not a lot of talking. It's just you and Matt Damon one on one while watching him, you know, plant crops and uh, just check out Mars and the rover and do whatever he has to do to survive. It's also uh, similar to gravity, I thought, in mm -hmm. terms of survival. There's, you know, he's doing whatever he has to and shit just keeps going wrong. One of the best movies I saw this summer, if not the best. It should have came out, I think, peak summer, because I think this is yeah, a we're perfect fall now. We're fall now. I think this is a perfect blockbuster movie. You got Ridley Scott, you got Matt, Matt Damon, you Matt got a Damon good storyline, a good space yeah. uh, story in the background. Yeah, uh, one final thing before I give the score. It also had, I mean, this this V is distracting <laughs> me. I almost feel like I need to button up here. Oh, well, it's too late. You know, you guys have already gone. <laughs> Quite the show. Your here. eyes worth. Um, Red light district. <laughs> one, one more thing before I score this bitch. I loved the the uh, kind of the '90s feel it had uh, mm -hmm. all around. There was definitely an Apollo 13 vibe. There was a lot of jokes during even serious situations. Not 
I shouldn't say during, but around, you know, before and after there was mm-hmm. some great, uh, great jokes being had. Just uh, cut intention. Cut intention. You know, it's, it's not like a Christopher Nolan movie where it's just constantly like dramatic and heavy. You know, there, there's a good sense of uh, fun being had by everybody. Score wise, I'm giving it a 10. I'm going to give it a nine. The only downside that I saw to it was early on in the story, it was kind of predictable. You kind of saw where things were going. I was telling you some of that stuff early on. So I would say I just, I knocked it down a notch for that. The ten's really hard. I wouldn't say it's a perfect movie, but it was probably one of the top two or three movies I saw this year. You know, and after seeing a movie, I always do rank movies a little high. I'm a little more lenient. So maybe after a couple months, I'll think back and maybe like, yeah, maybe I should have given it a nine like Derek said. Or maybe you'll rewatch it and find things that you didn't notice before and love it even more. Maybe it's an 11 at that <laughs> it point. Might be I mean, I did get Fantastic point. Four a 3, though, and that movie's a 2 or a 1. Both had Kate Mara. Yeah. Which, uh, and they were both in space. And that was the last time I reviewed a movie. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, lot of knowledge coming at you right now. Drop it. Thanks for watching. See you next time in the car.